And welcome into episode 33 of the Avids and Beyond. My name is Todd Emanuele, and uh, welcome back for another episode. I have a very special guest joining me today. I love having Avid fans on to get their perspective on uh, the whole situation, the whole uh, the whole traveling circus uh, uh, thing, you know. Uh, but Steve Coaster is here. Steve, uh, your your name says Judge Coaster, and that kind of scared <laughs> me when I saw that. Uh, but uh, welcome into the episode. Oh, thanks, Todd. This is uh, when I ever I get on Zoom, I do a lot of I am a judge here in Indiana and I do a lot of uh, Zoom hearings. So that's just automatically oh, wow. what pops up. So so me being on Zoom with you in this situation is much better than being on with you in a different situation in Indiana. I would agree with that. Yeah, I don't have a robe on, so you're safe. <laughs> but you are wearing a tie for those just listening. Uh, I feel very underdressed. <laughs> uh, for, for the episode here today. I don't yeah, normally we, dress up. I, I take it you just got out of work, right? Yeah, we had some uh, judicial meetings and uh, budget hearings and things like that that we had to get taken care of today. So I'm running a little late. So so what, what is your, uh, what kind of judge are you? What, what do you do? Uh, I'm a, a county judge here in, in Madison County, Indiana. Uh, nice. We have six in our county and I do primarily the uh, DCS, Department of Child Service cases, the oh, neglect geez. and abuse children and uh, juvenile delinquency cases and a few criminal cases. Well, that uh, that sounds like a lot of not fun uh, topics that you have to discuss every day. Um, yeah, we have a lot of problems around here for right. sure. Well, that's there and everywhere else in the world, but uh, it's good people like you that uh, take care of stuff like that. So thank you for what you do. We can say that. I appreciate that. Thank All you. All right. So you're in Indiana, as you said. Uh, explain to me this whole time zone thing, how it works. Now, I've always lived in New York. I live in central New York. We've always been in the eastern time zone. Indiana's kind of what, split in half between? Well, the now, well, most of the state is on what we call daylight savings time. And I think right. it's more for farmers. Right. Uh, but so twice a year, we have to to change our clocks once we move it forward and once we move it back. So right. Yeah, we different... do the same thing, but. Do you change from time zone to time zone? Uh, not necessarily. We're just, we're in conjunction with different time zones. And there's some portions of the state that are in a central time zone and that don't change. And then there's some that do. It's just, it's all very confusing. They're trying to just do away with it all together. But So part of the state doesn't even take part in it? Right. Yeah, I think there's some southern cities that don't take part and How can you maybe do- some northern ones as well around Chicago. How does everyone keep track of what time it is? That seems very confusing to me. Well, the the good news is, is nowadays with the, all the iPhones and things, they take care of it for you. So you really don't have to change a whole lot. It'll, it'll tell you what your uh, time that, is. Really that crap. is true. But you may be, well, if your phone doesn't change for some reason, you may be late for work or early for work, depending <laughs> on what time of year it right. is. Well, I'm right in the middle. So all everywhere around us keeps the same time as we do. So that's good. That's good. At least that, that would drive me crazy. But I guess if you grow up with, if you, have you always lived there? You've yes. always been there? Yep. So it's just always years. been a part of life. All right. Correct. Yeah. At, with me, like we we do the hour change. We spring ahead in fall back. Uh, yeah, and fall back in November. I can't remember when spring ahead is March, I guess it is. And then we fall back in November. Um, but we're always, you know, in the eastern time zone. You confused me when you said that the other day. I'm like, how do you you're in two different time zones? <laughs> well, we call it daylight savings. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is what our okay. time zone is, yeah. So, I would have understood that, I guess. I was I was thinking crazy. All right. So anyway, <laughs> the Avid brothers are your escape from uh, judge life, I would guess. Very much so. Yes. And that's they're a good thing to have to uh, to focus on something else for a while, because I know they, they helped me get me through the pandemic and all that stuff. That's basically when I really started listening to them. Um, right. When did you do you remember when and where you were when you discovered their music? Uh, I remember the song, and it was uh, it was uh, ten thousand words. I know that. I don't know where I heard it first. That was my first song too that I heard, by the way. Yeah, I, and and just love that, and then went down the rabbit hole from there uh, to all other songs, and uh, started listening to them, and was like, wow, you know, these guys are special. So uh, yeah, it started with ten thousand words, and uh, I actually didn't think anyone else knew who the Avett brothers were, and I was at a place in Indianapolis. And uh, there was a guy, a one man band singing and he started singing 10,000 words. And I struck up a conversation with him saying, hey, you know, I really like that song. I like the Avid Brothers. And it turns out he had lived in my little hometown here in uh, Alexandria really? for several years. So, yeah, we struck up a friendship. So, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. The band bringing people together. That's kind of what they do. Yeah. Um, but th- so that's cool. You don't remember how long how long has it been since you started listening? 
uh, that had to have been maybe 2011, 2012, okay. 10, 11 years. So you've been listening longer than me. Now, I knew of them way back in the day, but I never really listened to them. I remember seeing them on the Grammys when they performed with, uh, what's their names there? Um, oh my gosh, I just blanked on their names. Mumford and Sons and yes. uh, and Bob Dylan, that whole thing. Uh, and I remember wanting to listen to Mumford and Sons when I saw that for some reason. But years later, you know, I was listening to a podcast and discovered their music. And it's just the best thing I've ever found in my life. And yeah. the music is amazing. And I love the lyrics and all that stuff. I'm wearing my Tanya hat I for the love people it. watching on YouTube. I got it from Ryan Boyles in the officially in the Traveling Circus Hat Club. Uh, right. I I just peeked and saw myself wearing it, so I had to describe it for <laughs> people that aren't yeah. watching. Uh, but I, I call Tanya. I that? call Tanya my favorite Avit brother. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she'll probably say thanks, I guess, to that. I, I texted her though the picture of me wearing it, and she sent me back a smiley face. So I guess Very that cool. was uh, her approval for that. But thanks to Ryan for sending me the hat. I, I'm going to wear this to a show or something down the road. All right. So you were just recently over at the uh, Champagne show, right? Champagne, Illinois. Uh, yes. Who did you go with? I went with my 15 uh, year old son, who's a huge Avett Brothers fan too. So we have varying degrees of Avett fans in our family and he's the biggest one. So he's just the, the two biggest of us. one. Now, that's interesting to me. So he's 15 years old. How did he become a fan of the band? Because I, I at least in my house, uh, the younger people, aren't huge fans my my youngest daughter is because she knows i like them and she listens to you know we've gone to two shows together and all this stuff but explain how that happened well uh when i take them to school every day for years <laughs> i've always had a, a music sound or music list that they listen to every day and, and it switches you know every once in a while but there's always an avid brothers song in there so uh, once i play it long enough to where i can hear them playing it in their room then i know it's time <laughs> to switch it up so that's Good where job. it kind of started and uh, it kind of went from there. And then we went to see a show in Philadelphia. We're both big Phillies fan, which is a, a long story in and of itself. But uh, we went to a Phillies game and they were playing after the game. And so we got down on the floor uh, for that. And that's when the first time he saw them live. And he was, he, I mean, it was nothing but Avitz since then. That's cool. So was that the 2021 show? Yes. Okay. I think I have the poster from that show, actually. Is that the one where the whole band is on there? Yeah, the whole band was there. Was it 2022? I think it was last last year. Oh, was it the the picture? The poster though is the whole band on there, right? All four guys, at least. I mm, I don't believe I. I think I'm trying so. to remember three or three or four of the guys. I have the poster in my office. I don't have it here with me. Ah, okay. Yeah, I have it in my office too. <laughs> um, so that's cool that uh, that was his first show after a baseball game. That I need to do that someday. I wish they would uh, play at Yankee Stadium so I could go to a Yankee game and then see the Avids, but uh, that, that right. hasn't happened yet. Uh, sad to be a Yankee fan this year. Uh, <laughs> my goodness, they were supposed to be so good and, and it just hasn't happened uh, how did you guys become Philly fans? You said you had a, a story about that. Yeah, I have been for uh, since I was about 10 because uh, I'm here from central Indiana. I was a big Reds fan. Right. And right. Uh, as a Reds fan, I was a Pete Rose fan. So he was kind of my idol growing up. There you go. And at some point, the uh, Reds cut him and that made me mad. So at 10, I said, I'm not going to be a Reds fan anymore and I need a new <laughs> team. And around that time, my uncle who lived in Philadelphia had called and I was telling him the story and he said, well, you need to be a Phillies fan. I said, OK. And then <laughs> turns out Pete Rose gets uh, picked yeah. up by the Phillies right. after that. And then it's been, you know, Phillies ever since. And that, just because of that, I follow them. So my kids follow them, too. That's that's cool. They seem to follow in your footsteps, your kids. Right. That's, that's a good yeah. thing. Uh, yeah, I've been I was born and raised a Yankee fan. I remember being two years old. I Well, I don't really remember it, but I've heard stories of, uh, you know, sitting there and watching games. I've always been a baseball guy. I love it. Right. Uh eat, sleep, breathe baseball my whole life. Uh, so in the Yankees are very disappointing this year. So, but it's okay. Your Phillies are pretty good. They're, They're doing not bad. Okay. They went to the world series last year. That yeah, was very yeah, exciting. yeah. You got yeah. the Braves. The, those Braves are pesky though the, to deal with. <laughs> right. Yeah. It looks like we'll have to sneak in the wild card again. Yeah, if we're gonna make the playoffs, but... You'll be fine. That's okay. I, yeah, I don't think anyone's going to catch Atlanta. They are really good good team so anyway back to the champagne show that i started yes. to talk about and we went away from that tell me how that happened what went down i know you had an amazing experience at this show that uh, a lot of people would probably envy this uh this experience that you had 
Yeah, it, it was incredible. And I'm glad you wore the, the Tanya hat for, yeah, right? for me to talk about it. But uh, kind of so, did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to spend the weekend there anyway, because we, you know, we like to do that. If we're going to go away, you know, spend the weekend, check it out. I've never been to the University of Illinois before. So we wanted to check that out. A Big Ten, another Big Ten school. This is a Big Ten state. Uh, so we uh, got the uh, hotel early because they've skipped Indi- the Avid skipped Indiana this year. So I had to go see them. And that was the closest one was Champaign, Illinois. So we got our hotel that is right next to the State Farm Center uh, where the concert was going to be. So literally there was just a, a corner of a parking lot in between us and the show. So, uh, yeah, you sent me you know, a picture of how close you were to the arena. It yeah. looked like you were in the parking lot. And yeah, for, we were literally, it was, it was incredible from just outside our room. You could see the, the stadium so we could see where they were lining up and That's cool. I'll get to that in a few, but <laughs> the idea was we're going to go, we went down Friday early in the morning. So we go check out the campus Friday and then Saturday we were going to spend, you know, most of the day hanging out trying so we could try to get on the rail. I said, this is, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity, uh, let's do this. Let's just wait in line and we'll hang out and get the stickers. We'll do the whole experience. And uh, we got up that Saturday morning and kind of milling around. We we're going to want to wanted to watch the Colts play uh, at noon. And then we were going to head over after the first series or so to see the, their new quarterback. And at around 10, I get on Facebook and there's already people lining up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. You know? So then we look out and we see that there's this line of people already at 10 a.m. Yeah. I was like, I don't know that we want to do eight hours in the parking lot. Uh, you know, we our, our dream of the rail may be uh, you know, derailed here because of this. <laughs> Good point. So then I see some people talking in there about getting on it. They're getting there at one. And even that was pushing it a little bit early from when we wanted to be there. So uh, I said, let's do this. I said, let's go get lunch. We'll come back. You know, we'll kind of monitor the, the line situation and let's just plan on going at three. We're, we're in the pit. We're going to get good seats no matter what. We just may not be on the rail. And he was fine with that. So uh, as we're watching from 10 till we go to lunch, there's no one else that gets in line. So there was really? like initially 12 people that were there from 10 a.m. till we left at noon. So that's uh, surprising came, to me. Yeah. And when we came back, then at one, a few more people showed up and I would, you know, we still thought, OK, we're, we're probably not going to get real good seats here. So we finally went down about three and we were probably maybe 25 people in front of us. That was it. So, yeah, so you're you were golden for the rail. Yeah, 25 yeah, and, people. A lot of those say, people don't sit or you don't run to the rail. They go back and sit back in wherever they're right. Right. So we saved about five hours yeah. of our time of not being out in the sun and still made it to the rail. Uh, so it was really good. And I, and I had told him, too, uh, I'm a big violin guy on rock songs. I love that. I've always loved that. That's always been a big thing for me. So I wanted to be in front of Tanya. Mm-hmm. So I figured that that's, you know, that everyone wants to be where the, the brothers are <laughs> uh, or Bob. So I figured we'd still get decent seats. And uh, we ended up in front of Tanya right on front of the rail so it was just just an incredible experience and incredible experience for my son and then as you know as I, I I posted on Facebook after the show was over Tanya brought a set list over and gave it to my son she and just handed it just, right to him handed it right to him just that an incredible cool. incredible moment and I uh, think like I had told you on on Facebook that I about got choked up and I am one of the least emotional people in the world and I was like this is pretty cool because my son was just beaming. All of a sudden, he was a rock star, you know. Yeah. Everybody wanted a picture of the set list and right. the set yeah. list. And so it was a really cool experience. It's good that you're not overly emotional as a judge, by the way. That's probably, <laughs> probably a good thing, right? Right. Yeah, I was a prosecutor before that for 24 years before I became a judge. So wow, uh, I, I've seen a lot over the years. You sure have. Man, that's uh, that's an important job. <laughs> uh, it, it, what's the hardest thing about being a prosecutor? Uh, probably the, just the, the emotional toll on the victims. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I ended, I was kind of high up in the prosecutor's office. So uh, I kind of ran the office locally mm-hmm. here. So I was doing all the bigger cases, the murders, and, you know, we had a, a rash of children die, which is why I ended up running for judge, mm. uh, because of some, uh, problems that have been going on in the community. So there was just a lot of murders and, uh, you have to go out to those scenes as a prosecutor because you're also a law enforcement officer here in Indiana. Oh my so gosh. I've, I've seen a lot of death over the years. And that's just one thing that I've always, because I go to speak to schools sometimes and I tell them, 
you know, I can sometimes just sit there and just flash back all of the scenes of all of the the people that have been uh, tragically killed and mm-hmm. how they've been killed. And there's been some pretty, pretty nasty stuff out there. I can't imagine having to live with that after that can't be easy. Um, so it's good to have distractions, but you'll, you'll never get rid of that. Right. Right. And it's funny because I, I was telling this story to a high school class a couple of years ago and, uh, at the end, I ask if anybody has any questions, and one girl in the back raises her hand, and I say yes, and she says, "How are you okay?" Right, right, really. <laughs> well, that's a really good question. You know, what? you just have to to departmentalize it, and uh, you know, mm. it's your job is your job, and right, you come I guess from if, your family, and you leave it there at work. So. Right, I guess if you see it enough, you, I can I say you almost become numb to it. You do. Is to that a possible? Extent. Thing to it have. is you uh you get a, a very warped sense of humor mm. uh, that only people that deal with these things police officers and prosecutors and judges uh, really can get uh it's it's tough but you, you deal with it someone has to do it man I, I i can't imagine i didn't know all this stuff about you so it's amazing you know what you don't know what people <laughs> go through you know what, what you've seen in your life i, I never would have guessed that not knowing uh that much about you other than you're a big avid brothers fan uh and that's my outlet so i you know you try not to mix the two very much right do you ever i'm thinking this as you're a judge this just popped into my head do you ever use avid lyrics in the courtroom have you ever done that before Uh, i have not but i have mentioned the avids like sometimes dealing with some children that have been through some stuff you know well i'll talk to them about some things and uh they'll if i know that they like music i'll ask them what kind of music they like and I will sometimes I'll tell them, okay, I'm going to go listen to that group, but here's what I want to do. When you come back the next time, I want you to listen to the Avit brothers and then we'll talk about it at the next hearing. So nice. they, always, they always get a kick out of that. Does it, does anything ever come of it? Do a kid say, Oh, that was good or anything like that? Well, I haven't, I haven't had one yet come back. So I'm kind of new to this judge thing. I've only been a judge for a couple of years. So okay. the, the review hearings are usually six months in between. So I'll have a few coming up. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Yeah. Keep me posted. That's, that's the first time we have a conversation about it, man. Uh, wow. Uh, you, you've blown me away with, uh, your job situation and stuff. It's just, I can't imagine all the stuff you've gone through and, uh, the Ava brothers. It's funny though. Cause like you listen to the Alex Sossler interviews that i've done and we talk about you know death being a theme of their music you know and and life and death and the whole memento mori art thing and stuff and it's just funny how everything kind of ties together like yeah all that you've seen in your life it kind of goes along with the music kind of you know in a way right yeah Uh, no i agree and and they're just incredible songwriters and that's something i've always been drawn to is groups with uh, really good songwriters and they just c- consistently blow me away with the lyrics that they they come up with right yeah just beautiful stuff um okay uh so you picked the music for the episode and i know uh, i gotta open my list up you've got quite a list i don't know if we're gonna be able to get to, <laughs> <laughs> to all of them here but uh why don't you tell me what songs you picked why you picked them and uh, we'll run down the list here all right. And like, like I told you, this was the most stressful part about doing this interview was there was so much music, <laughs> you know, being 53 years old. And there's so much that I want everybody else to hear. And I want to tell you, too, and thank you for your show of how much I love your in, your show and enjoy it and how much new music that I've learned from this show has been That's absolutely cool. amazing. I mean, my my uh, playlist on my phone is probably about two thirds of songs that I've learned from your show. Right That's now. very so, cool to hear. Yeah, you know, it's amazing how much mu- new music I've learned from this show, too. When I ask for requests from people, it's stuff I've never heard. And right. now it's stuff that I listen to all the time. It's like, wow, this is cool. There's so much music that stems from the Avid Brothers that's yeah. similar. Right. And uh, it's I, I just love everything about it. So I, I'm glad that, to hear that and uh, uh, keep listening. And Oh, I definitely I'm will. Glad you, I'm glad I got you on to be a part of the show because you're always giving me uh ideas and different things like you're the one that gave me the idea to post all of the links to every episode on the front of my pa- or i uh pinned it on top of my facebook right. page and now it's easy if you missed an episode you can go in there i didn't even think of that before it's perfect and uh, I very i very selfishly requested that because i i like to go back and re-listen to them because you just had and that's what you know, when you come on and say you had a special guest and I'm looking at the list, I re- actually wrote down some of the people that you've had on your show. And for me to be included in that list of people <laughs> is just amazing to me with Tanya and 
Jim Avett and David Childers and the Bernie sisters. I mean, that's, you've, you've had some rock stars. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely pretty cool. I get to see Jim Avett next to uh, next Tuesday. I'm going to see him in concert. So uh, I'm going to ask him to come back on my show again. I've got to get him back on. Um, yeah, and make sure that he knows that he's on when he's on this yeah. time. <laughs> it was actually kind of funny when he did that. Uh, yeah, when, yeah, when are we was... starting? Well, Jim, we yeah. started a half hour ago. <laughs> that was great. All right, so my song, yeah, my list. first song that I listed was Father's First Spring. And okay. I think, you know, every father loves that. And I tried to pick some songs that you haven't had on. And I know you've had that song on here before, but that's yeah. uh, when we got back from the concert. You know, of course, I have I have five children and, you know, I had this special thing with my son at this la at the champagne show uh but then he told me like a day after he said i think i've got a new Avid favorite song and i've never even mentioned this song to him before and this is the one he picked so i thought okay that that's got to be on the episode then nice. since it's now his favorite song to make sure that he listens to the episode i will lead that i'll lead the show off with uh fathers for spring all right that's awesome uh the next one i picked was it goes on and on and i picked that one because that's my wife's favorite Avett song and she's not a huge Avett fan she likes them she you know we've been to several concerts together uh but it, you know it's a little too slow paced for her you know she says it's depressing to listen to them and I'm like you I think you said one time that uh slow songs make you happy I love sad songs yeah, I love sad, sad music yeah, that's yeah. what it was yeah I do too and I'm the same way so that's why you know I really enjoy listening to them for pleasure and she likes it and she really likes no hard feelings but her favorite song is it goes on and on they have they, plenty of upbeat songs. Did you tell yeah, her that? Do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she's been to the concert, so she knows. Okay. She loves going to the concert because they play a lot of the upbeat stuff. That was my daughter. When we were my oldest daughter, she was, you listen, so you know, right. she was skeptical yep. about the whole thing. But she loved the concert because they play, it was like a rock show. Right. They didn't play a lot of slow stuff. They played all upbeat stuff. And she's like, did they know I was coming? And that's why they did that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's why they but we've, that. we've not got to hear that one live. Because they never play it when she's there. And I don't know how often they do play it. I'll have to look on uh, the, the site to see how often it gets played. But that's yeah, Tim, her favorite song. <laughs> yeah. So, so I picked that one. Okay. Uh, Down with the Shine is my uh, last David song. Uh, and that's kind of, I call that the, the uh, coaster anthem. Because when the last concert we went to here in Indiana, I had uh, three of my four sons with us. And they love that song. And we sing it together. And we just kind of belt it out anytime it's playing. So... <laughs> Uh, that's a cool song for our family. Uh, that okay, we so I got to put those three on there then. That's that's for sure. Yeah. And uh, the the non, I, I've got a Tanya song, obviously, because she's uh, special to our family now that we have her set list that Definitely. we're going to get framed. Uh, and I picked uh, Who Will Take My Place, uh, a, a song that she sings. And it's, you know, it's it's on my playlist now. It's I just love her music and I can't wait for her new album to come out. So you got to have her back on to promote that Patreon page so we can get her to get that album promoted. Definitely. And uh, she she sent me a copy of the album. Did you know yeah. that? I, well, I know that you had posted that or had said something yeah. about that somewhere. I can't share it with anyone. Though. I know. But is, it, is it awesome? Is it incredible? It's great. Yeah, it's spectacular. Yeah, She's I knew so it would good. have to be. All I right. So She's so nice. Uh, the next one is uh, Don't Follow by Alice in Chains. And uh, I picked that because I'd never heard that song before. I'm not a big Alice in Chains fan, never have been. They're not really my style. Uh, but I heard on uh, Mossberger's, uh, what, what is that, that he has the uh, long story short. Yeah, his Patreon page there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had put uh, on there uh, some old stuff from the, I think it was even before they were the Avits. And uh, one of the songs that they had covered on there was this Alice in Chains, Don't Follow. And I was like, that's a great song. I got to like back out. in their Nemo days. I, I must have missed that. I got to yeah, check it, it out. There, there's somewhere on his uh, long story short page. And it's like a cassette. There's like a picture of a cassette. Oh, OK. I have heard that. I've heard that. OK. Yeah. Somewhere in there is the they the Avitz cover uh, don't follow. So that made me look up that song from Allison Chains. And that's on my playlist now that I listen to over and over. I love that song. Nice. Uh, next is. Uh, Sing My Song by Langhorn Slim. And I've got a good story for, for that one as well. Uh, we were in Nashville not too long ago to see uh, uh, Billy Joel oh, nice. and Stevie Nicks. 
So oh. it, it was actually a, a gift from my staff. They gave me concert really? tickets. Yeah, in a, in a hotel room to go see what? them. Uh, yeah, that's very cool. I know. So uh, we. Because I got like wife. a coffee mug for my people <laughs> I work with. Uh, I've yeah, I've got a lot of people that work for me because I have to run <laughs> a, a juvenile center and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, but anyway, we're down in Nashville, and we were at this hotel that they had picked. You know, they had paid for the hotel, and it was this little place in uh, East Nashville. Uh, just across the the bridge from where the concert was being played at the football stadium. And it was pretty cool because we go there and and our room wasn't ready. So we sat at the bar and and had some food and they had little coasters, which, you know, my last name is Coaster. I collect coasters, but on the coaster, I have one right here. And on the coasters, their theme is for long hangs, tall tales, and no hard feelings. Ah, So I'm like, okay, so there's, you know, can you hold it randomly? Hold it up to uh, the camera if you can. Can you? Here we are staying at this place, and this is there. Let's see if I can get it to the camera. There you go. That's yeah, cool. So that's like <laughs> the thing for the hotel. So while we're there in Nashville, you know, we stayed there a couple of days, and uh, I went around to in East Nashville to some old record stores just because, you know, I wanted a souvenir of something from Nashville because that's a big music city, and uh, I was going to see what I could find, just something that I could frame. And wasn't really sure what I was looking for. We went to a couple, didn't find a whole lot. I did find a, a Jim Avett of CD, so I scored one of those. So that was cool. <laughs> uh, but the only Avett Brothers albums that I could find, I think uh, Closer Than Together was there. Right. And that's that's not really a frameable one because it doesn't even say Avett Brothers on it. So I was getting kind of depressed and not finding anything that I really wanted. And then I happened to look at a, a local artist section. Yeah. And as I'm looking through, there's a Langhorn Slim. And it was the Strawberry Mansion, his new album that he made during Love COVID. That. Love that album. Yeah. And that, that Sing My Song is one of my favorite songs on there. But it's actually signed. And it's <laughs> like, because he, there's a, the, the album cover has his signature on it. And that's right. part of the album cover. So that's right. not it. But on, on the side of it, it says uh, one of his other songs, uh, he puts a little message on there to Bobcat, whoever that is, and then signs it. So it's a signed Langhorn Slim, who, <laughs> you know, clearly is at beyond on the Avits and beyond. So I thought that is so cool. And then uh, as I read about that album, he uh, made that album during COVID. Right. Was having writer's block and all yep. kinds of problems. And somebody finally said, look, you write a song every single day and then we're, we're going to record it. You, that, you know, you have to write one song every day. And that's what he did. And this was one of those songs. And it's about writer's block. You know, it's, it's sing my song when my song appears. So that's it's, great. It's, it's a real simple song. You know, there, there's not a lot of depth to it, uh, but it's just a great song. And I really like it. And it reminds me of the, the Nashville experience. And it, it's Avit related because, of course, you know, he's going to be at the beach. Yep. Uh, I think next year. And it's a, a good friend of theirs. So he is. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a very cool experience that I found there in Little East Nashville. And he's from East Nashville, and it was recorded in East Nashville. So it's it's a pretty special album to me. It's a, it's a great album. Langhorn's so good. He's such a talented guy. And uh, he's really he kind of blown baby. up. Yeah, he did just have yeah. a baby. Yep. Uh, he's kind of blown up since that album came out a little bit. So it's it's great to see him get, have some success, too, after having writer's block. <laughs> right. And I don't know how we're doing on time, but I, one more if you we ever get time. to it. And I don't know that you will, as I go to my heart, okay, uh, which was played live in Champagne, and like I said, I don't know if you can get to it, but it's a song. You know, I've I've heard that album several times and never oh, really gosh. thought much about that song. Yeah, so it was never really on my playlist or on my radar. And then I heard Scott sing it live and oh. just completely blew me away. And it's just yep. amazing an experience of a song that I've heard dozens of times, never thought twice about it. Then you hear it live, and then go back and listen to the album version. And it's completely different to you now. Now it's just this amazing song that I've been listening to over and over since the concert. Love it. I will squeeze that one in somehow. We'll get it in there. I, I can only, let's see, <clears throat> that's four Avid songs, right? So I can do four Avid songs. That's like the max I can play in an hour. Uh, from okay, one band. yeah, that would so, be very cool. So hopefully I can squeeze it in there. But uh, uh, great song choices. Love it. Uh, I always, this is one of my favorite things that I started doing is having the guests pick the music. Because like you already mentioned, you get a broad range of stuff. And uh, right. you, you, people are learning new music and hearing new things that they may not have heard before. Um, so thank you for picking the music for this one. One other thing I want to talk about here, sure. you mentioned the set list from Tanya. Uh, you got a rare set list, right? Wasn't it one? Because Joe, Joe wasn't there. Right. 
Right. Uh, yeah, and some people had mentioned that. Uh, you know, I don't know much about the set list other than what's put on Facebook. But well, yeah, people I can were tell saying. you that Joe is the one that puts them together normally. He types them up and prints them out, whatever, for the band, for the the guys to put out on the stage. And you have uh, one that someone I don't know even know who put them together, but it's right. done in a different font and it's a yeah. different looking set list. So kind of a rare one. Uh, yeah. Joe's yeah, been with cool. him for a very long time and has been doing that for years and years. So. Uh, that that's pretty neat that you got you got one uh, without Joe being there. Now, what was it like not having Joe there? Uh, you really didn't. They were, they're so good and they're so talented and they're right. so, such professionals. You really didn't notice it. You know, I, I was depressed when I found out that he wasn't going to be there. And then when right. I found out why, I was like, okay, this is perfectly acceptable. Yeah, it's all but good. Tanya, you know, she's she's good enough on the strings that she can cover for that. And did you hear what she had said after the show, after the two shows, that she? was hearing Could, Joe's right. parts in her yeah. head and she had to focus and concentrate on just playing her part and was, you know, missing Joe's part, but she heard it all in her head during the shows. So that had right. to be hard to not yeah. have him next to her. Cause they're so, yeah. I mean, they play off each other so well. Right. But time, it seemed, but... it seemed absolutely seamless to me that you oh, really pros. couldn't even tell. Yeah, yeah for sure. Pros. That's good. And uh, what was, was not on the set list that I got to mention, because I know you're a big David Childers fan and I love David Childers, but love I, David. my favorite cover from the Avits is uh, the prettiest thing. And that's not on the set list, but they played that. So it's not it, on the set list. I didn't realize that. Yeah. It is not on there, but they played it, you know, and they do that a lot. Sometimes yeah. they'll go off the, you know, I didn't off. realize that. So they threw that one in there just for you. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm telling everybody. <laughs> they knew the judge was in the house, so they uh, they threw in one of his favorites in there. That's cool. I yeah, love. David. I love. David's I love David. I love that song. And you, uh, you gave me some stuff to give away, and I think yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna put something together. You gave me some signed David Childers stuff that yes. I'm gonna do. I got to think of something to do to give it away here with this episode, but I will I will do that and. uh so I don't know, pay attention to Facebook if you're listening to this and I will post something uh, about what we're going to do to give those away. But uh, you very graciously sent those to me and uh, we will give them away with this episode somehow. Yeah, that was a, another Nashville memory that I have was bought some art from him while I was in Nashville, you know, staying up in the middle of the night on my phone. We had these email conversations back and forth and I'm negotiating with him to send me some signed stuff. And I told him, <laughs> if you send me two of each of ones and I'll send Todd <laughs> some to give away on a show and he's so gracious you know he, he couldn't have been more willing to sign anything and send me stuff that's so. awesome david is one of the if not the nicest person i've ever met uh in, in just someone that's you know a famous musician especially he's so down to earth right. such a nice guy and uh you know i i wished him a happy birthday and he's like his response was, thank you for what you do. I'm like, I don't do anything. What are you <laughs> talking about? You're a future uh, North Carolina Music Hall of Famer. I'm just yeah, uh, he, he a guy be. doing a podcast in my basement. <laughs> yeah, you got to make that happen. And, and if it does, Todd, let's get together and we'll meet up and we'll go to when he's inducted. Yeah, I'm there. Uh, that sounds good to me. He totally deserves it. And it, it, let me just say, he better get in someday soon because yeah. some of the folks that are in there that are ahead of him like people from american idol and stuff like that no way no way should he not be in that right. hall of fame so we'll we'll get it in. we'll get him in there somehow all right well steve thank you so much uh, for coming on well you got a you got a friend there on your lap now yeah that's my little puppy he's joining us <laughs> what's his favorite david song <laughs> it's a her she likes oh, sorry all. Sorry, I couldn't. She, I, I can only see ears <laughs> <laughs> whatever i'm listening to at the time is what she likes nice all right. Well, Steve, uh, Judge, thank you so much for coming on. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm really honored that you came on my show after hearing what you do with your life. It's way more important than, uh, you know, listening to music and all this stuff. I really I appreciate what you do. And I think a lot of people that probably live around you appreciate what you do, too. Well, the honor is all mine. I love your show and keep up the good work and you always have a fan in me. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. And uh, we'll talk soon. All right. All right. We'll see you, Todd. Thank yep, you. Take care.